By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Camel Trophy in Arnhem, the Netherlands, the Gentlemen's Tournament. And we are at round number three. And Gentlemen's, just a quick reminder, means we are not playing with the Mind Twist or with Library of Alexandria at, uh, at this tournament. What we are playing with, though, are some really cool, beautiful old school cards. And we're going to see a lot of those in this matchup. What a cool matchup it is. On the left, we've got Vilko with a Reanimator deck. It's a beautiful deck picture. More about that later in the video. And he is taking on Remco. And Remco is playing maybe even a cooler deck. He's playing black and white. A deck that's built around transmutation. And maybe you're thinking, what? what does that card do? I have no idea. Don't worry. All that will become clear in the deck tech section of the video. Before I start with that section though, I would like to point out that as always, you can also go to the match first. And some of you prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description be uh, below. Because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on MTG Games, it'll take you straight to the action. And as for now, I'm gonna start with the deck of the player on the left, that is Wilco. Let's take a look at his reanimator list. And here we see the reanimator deck of Wilco. Now, what a reanimator deck wants to do, right? It wants to play with a lot of fat creatures. Like in this case, Strike, Mahamoti Jin, the four Sheevan Dragons. You want to get them in your graveyard ASAP and then you want to reanimate them. Hence the name Reanimator. And the best way to reanimate them, I guess the simplest way that we know how, is animate dead. One black and one for an enchant creature. Um, you can enchant a creature in your graveyard and then it comes back into play. Now the down downside of this is though that if they disenchant, for example, your enemy dead, you also lose the creature. Now, um, of course, the thing is with these decks, how am I going to get my creatures in the graveyard? That's a super important part of the strategy, right? And that is where a very expensive and super cool card comes into the picture. And that is this card, Bazaar of Baghdad, a land from Arabian Nights. Tap it, draw two cards, then discard three cards. The funny thing about this land is that, you know, back in the day, uh, people didn't really appreciate this card very much. It was considered a bad card because you draw two, but you lose three. That's just really bad. And of course, things have changed since then. And I also in old school already for a long while, this has been a very um, good strategy. I mean, it used to be more like a tier three, tier two strategy. But I mean, if you look at the results of these at reanimator decks lately, it's really like going towards that tier one uh, deck list, actually. But anyway, um, so Bazaar of Baghdad is really good, and I guess Vilko is fortunate enough to own four of them. And then in this reanimator strategy, there's another really cool card, but again, it's quite expensive, so not a lot of players have a playset of it, and that is All Hollows Eve. So All Hollows Eve, a card from Legends, it's a sorcery that is just kind of played as it's a first card with suspend counters on it. You could say, I'm just gonna, gonna read the current Oracle text to you. So what it says, um, if, if you look at the current Oracle text, it says, exile all Hall Hollows Eve with two screen counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, if all Hollows Eve is exiled with a screen counter on it, remove a screen counter from it. If there are no more screen counters on it, put it into the graveyard and each player returns all creature cards from their graveyards onto the battlefield. Right, so basically, what you want to do is you want to fill your graveyard up with Bazaar of Baghdad with a lot of like expensive creatures like the Mahamoti Jin, the Shivans, the Trikes. Right, you want to do that as quickly as you can. Then you want to play out your All Hollows Eve, and then after two turns, you're going to get whoop, all your creatures back in, and you have a huge army. And your opponent probably doesn't have this engine where you can just pitch all those big creatures in the graveyard. So that means you get a lot of really big creatures. Your opponent maybe gets like one creature back. And that's all good, right? So reanimator, very strong strategy. I'm really looking forward to see this list because I simply love, you know, watching Shivans and Mahamoti Jins enter the battlefield and tear the opponent apart. That's just a lot of fun. But actually his opponent today, Remco, is also playing with a super cool deck. Let's take a look at his list. And here we see the deck of Remco. So it's black and white. And then the fun starts because I'm just really excited about this deck. He wants to do such a cool thing. And I want to talk about it. First, maybe it's good to discuss that. You're probably wondering, what are those cards in the right bottom corner with the glare? I actually, I don't know. I can't really see them. One of them is the Abyss. That's what I can identify. But those other two black cards under there, it's kind of hard to see because of that glare. But I mean, the main meat of the deck, what this deck wants to do is play Transmutation. So maybe it's good to first discuss 
what transmutation does. So transmutation is one black and one for an instant from Legends that reads, until end of turn, target creature's power and toughness are switched. Effects that alter power, alter toughness instead, and vice versa. So the cool thing here is, right, um, that if you have a 3-6, like for example, this Abomination, or actually actually it's a 2-6, uh, 2 black and 3 to cast, uh, it becomes a 6-2. So you attack with your 2-6. The moment that your opponent is, is saying no blocks, before damage is dealt, that's when you play your transmutation, right, preferably. So you can just deal 6 damage in one go. That's the ideal, right? And when you look at the creature base of his deck, his whole deck is built around around this, right? We see Dancing Scimitar, which is a 1-5 flyer, so you can turn into a 5-1 flyer. We see Jade Statue, which you can turn into a 3-6 uh, statue, but then of course you switch powers, it becomes a 6-3. So you can just deal a lot of unexpected damage, especially in that turn one, uh, sorry, game one, right? When he doesn't know about your transmutation strategy and he's probably just thinking, what's going on? This is not a typical dead guy ill build. What is he doing? I don't see Hypnotic Spectre. Uh, what does he want to do here? You know, and then all of a sudden you start playing this, this big toughness creatures and then you swap it around with transmutation. I mean, that's got to be a lot of fun at Emco when you pull it out for the first time against your opponent. Now there is a card in this deck that I'm, oh, I'm almost more excited about than transmutation. And that is the Great Defender. Now Great Defender, look at this card. It's one white to cast an instant. The art, I mean, it's a merfolk, right? It's a merfolk standing, I mean, he's standing in the water. Why is this on a white card? But anyway, Great Defender is here. We see a hammer uh, head shark in the back as well. This is such a blue piece of art on a white card. But anyway, what does it do? Because that's pretty cool. Keep transmutation in mind. So target creature gains plus zero plus X until end of turn where X is the creature's casting cost. So if you would play this on, for example, that Abomination again, the casting cost is five. This creature would become a 211. And then you play your transmutation and it becomes an 11-2. And, and ideally you could deal 11 damage with your Abomination, you know. That would be... I'm just, I so hope that you can pull this off at Emco in this, in this match, because I would love to have that here on the channel. I'm just, I just want to thank you at Emco in advance, even if you, even if you lose this game 2-0, you know, because the reanimator deck looks really strong, even, I still want to thank you for trying this, because I think this is really old school, looking at those cool cards and trying to figure out how could I use them, and you know, I'm just going to build a deck around, I don't care, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to see if it works. I, I, I love it. I know that in the past, I believe you also came with a, a Rampage deck that was also super cool to play against. And now you brought this Transmutation deck to the table. I tip my hat to you, sir. I absolutely love it. Anyway, this is the deck of Remco. We already looked at the deck of Vilco. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one. Here we go. Remco on the play with this black and white Transmutation deck. Starting here with a factory into a mana vault, passing the turn to Vilco, who's playing a reanimator strategy. There we see a Black Lotus, a Mox, Mox number two. Wow, that's a lot of mana in uh, the first turn. Is he going to crack the Lotus here? That's a big question. He does play with a lot of fatties like Mahamoti Jin, uh, Shivan. Oh, there we go. Shivan Dragon, turn one. This is insane. Oh, my goodness. And now if you're Remco, you're really hoping to find that white mana and the swords. Or, of course, okay, this is also an answer, Maze of If. So this is perfect for Remco. This maze saves him from instant death. Sending back here to Shivna with the maze. Let's see what else uh, Vilko can do here. Playing a Sylvan, which is quite good, actually. Because, I mean, yes, it was a great opener with the Lotus and the Moxen, but you do lose a lot of cards. Look at that. I believe only one card in hand. And with the Sylvan, he can kind of rebuild. But first, it's uh, Remco's turn. Playing a Savannah here. And I mean, Remco having five mana as well. Passing the turn to Vilko. Looking at the top three, I wonder if he's going to take some extra cards. I guess he is. It looks like he made a little mistake there, hence the shuffling. Took a card too many, it seems. And there's usually a really friendly atmosphere amongst uh, old schoolers. So these things are settled amongst each other. So they decided to go and, uh, and let... Vilko here shuffle, and he still keeps the same three cards, right? You see him putting those separate, and now he has the same decision to make. I'm expecting him to just draw an extra card here, to be honest. It looks like he's a little bit in the tank here. 
He's gonna put one card back, it seems, so drawing two cards, gonna drop here to 16. What did he pick? And I'm now thinking, does he have any land removal in the deck? I don't think so, actually. There's the attack, sending it back again and passing the turn. He did find a land, of course, with the bayou. There's a swamp here. So Vilko can now play an abomination if he has one. Just passing the turn, though. We can kind of see his hand. There's a transmutation in there, maybe two even. Two planes and that one card I cannot identify. Vilko drawing one card here. Playing another Mox. So after that explosive opener that kind of may have if put a damper on his plans. Look at this bizarre back that though. That is really good. Also in combination with the Sylvan because you already know what you're going to draw. So next turn he could decide to draw an extra card. Right, draw two at three in hand, put himself back on 12, then use the bazaar. It could be an option. There we see a tap of five by Remco. There's the abomination, the two six creature. Doesn't look all that good against uh, the Sheevan. But of course, he does have the transmutation in hand that he could use. There we see the bazaar activation and on the end step. Drawing two cards and then discarding three cards. So he's already filling his graveyard there with big creatures. And if he can now find an anime dead or an All Hallows Eve, he's in a good spot. Deciding to draw two again, gonna drop two 12. One black tapped for a soul ring. Tapping six mana. Are we going to see another big beater? Yep, we are. There is a Mahamoti Jin entering the battlefield. This is pretty problematic here for Vilko because he only has one maze, though. There's the attack again, sending it back with the maze. Now he's going to untap, take a damage, probably from the vault, dropping to 19. Exactly. The draw card for turn. And I think I'm, I'm expecting him to attack here with the Abomination, with the Transmutation in hand. He can at least trade off a Shivan or Mahamoti for an Abomination. He is not, though. He's passing the turn. Interesting. Perhaps he doesn't have a Transmutation in hand, and I'm mistaken, of course. Or he simply doesn't want to use it yet. I mean, Vilko is on 12, so if he can find the right opening there, maybe he's waiting for that moment. There's the double attack here by Vilko, so he's going to send back to Sheevan probably because you can pump it. So take five from the Mahamoti, dropping here to 14. Ooh, he's going to play more big creatures. Look at that. There's a Triskelion. And that's, of course, another strong side of the reanimator deck. Like if you're later in the game, you don't really need to reanimate anymore. You probably have enough mana anyway. Also, with all the mana ramp in the deck, you know, the Moxen, the Soul Ring, the Lotus. So, you know, you can just start hard casting your big creatures. And Vilko here finding another planes, dropping to 13 because of, of course, the mana vault. Passing to turn here. Ah, this is really difficult. And there we saw, by the way, Vilko uh, activating the Bazaar of Baghdad on end step there. Of Remco makes sense. Now he's looking at the top three again with the Sylvan. But things are looking really good here for Vilco. He is taking an extra card. Interesting. So that would mean he goes to eight. No, he's taking one. He's being disciplined. Because I wanted to say, if you go to eight, I understand. But it is kind of risky, right? If your opponent has some kind of trick. I mean, although he's, I mean, he's pretty safe, right? Be also because of um, of the fact that his opponent Remco here is not playing with Red, for example. But you never know. I think it's better to be safe, especially when you're already winning, attacking here with the two flyers. So is he going to take five more damage again, sending back here to Shivan? Okay, and also a Swords in hand. So he's going to send back the Mahamoti, Swordsing the Shivan. The nice thing here for Vilko is that when you have that um, that Sylvan, of course, life gain means cards next turn. Look at that. Also playing another Mahamoti Jin. Wow. 
There's just too much on the board here. This is super difficult for, for Remco to manage. But he's got another turn to go. He's going to drop to 12 because of the Volt. Or does he want to untap? Looks like he's considering untapping it. He does have a lot of mana. So he is untapping here the Mana Volt. Not taking the damage. Going to draw a card for turn here. Also has lands in hand, of course. Exactly. There we see another Plains. And I believe I said earlier it's a Savannah. Of course, it's a Scrubland. Why would he play with the Savannah? So that's, <laughs> sorry, guys. So Scrubland there. So he's got a black and two white, and of course a three colorless from the Mana Volt. Yeah, two transmutations in hand there, and a sinkhole. But like I said before, I think I would. Well, now I don't think I would attack anymore with the Abomination because then you're opening it up for the Trike to attack. But earlier in the game, I think it would have been worth the consideration to attack with the Abomination, play your Transmutation and trade like a Sheevan for your Abomination. But that's all water under the bridge and look at this. Oh man. Kicking a man when he's down. Vilko here playing an Ancestral Recall. And probably just going to swing in here with the two Flyers, deal five more points of damage, putting Vilko here on eight. That's exactly what happens here, putting him on 8. I would love to see an All Hollows Eve still. That would be quite cool. Vilko having two cards in hand now, I believe. And it is beautiful to see this board state, you know, the Tuma, Motis, another Sheevan, why not? I mean, look at the board state here of Vilko. Very impressive. And then there's that one abomination on the side of Remco. It is a super cool creature though. I think I think Abomination should have the Thicket Basilisk ability, if you ask me. I mean, look at it. Or it should just be unblockable, maybe, because it's it's an abomination. Nobody wants to fight with that creature. Okay, there is a Jalum Tome. So you can try to dig a little deeper. Try to find a solution. I believe that was a land though. Discarding a transmutation. I think, I mean, you know, Remco, in all fairness, you're pretty much dead. So I would I would just attack with the Abomination just to, to play the Transmutation or to see what happens. Who cares? But he's not doing it, though. He's passing the turn. I think, I mean, Vilko can just attack here and, and, and win the game. Sending back to Sheevan and taking a 10. And that's it. Game number one. He goes to the Reanimator player. And uh, he was dominating this game the entire time. Let's hope that after sideboarding, the Transmutation deck can do something back. So we are, we're going to let these uh, players sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. There we see a Mishra's Factory again, just like he did in uh, game one here for Remco. Bazaar of Baghdad, Mox Pearl, Mox Jet. And of course, the activation of the Bazaar draw two cards, this card three. Let's see what he's going to put in the bin. Sheevan Dragon, of course, probably going to put a lot of fatties in there. We didn't see an old Hello's Eve in uh, game one. Would be nice to see it in game two. Look at that Abyss there in the hand of Remco, though. That's going to be a really good card against the deck of Vilko. There's an Animate Dad. So again, a lot of shenanigans here. Another Sheevan Dragon turn one. It's amazing, man. <laughs> oh, it's just insane. Game one, Sheevan Dragon turn one. Game two, Sheevan Dragon turn two. Very stylish. We do see again a uh, um, an answer here for Remco because there is a Sword Supply Shares there in hand for him. So he can start playing that one out if Vilko attacks. And he probably is going to, of course. I mean, what else are you going to do with your Sheevan? There's the swords, taking care of business. 
does mean four life here for uh, Vilko. It's going to go up to 24. He's now activating his Bazaar of Baghdad. Going to draw two cards, discard three. What is he going to discard? That's a big question. Another Bazaar of Baghdad. It's the second one there in the bin. There's a Black Lotus. Interesting. So no big creatures there in hand, it seems, for Vilko. And this is not what you want to discard with your Bazaar. That's, of course, the risk. You don't know what cards you're going to draw unless you, of course, have that Sylvan that he had earlier in the game that you can kind of predict what's on top of your library. There we see a Demonic Tutor being played out. Could, of course, go for the Ancestral Recall, but he can also maybe go for a spicier option. Anyway, he does pass the turn here to Remco. Let's see what he can do. There's a Plains. Ooh, also a Wrath of God, I believe, in hand. So he just put a lot of anti-creature cards in his deck, and that makes absolute sense. I am a little bit surprised that he's not attacking, though, here with the Mistress Factory. Kind of looked like he had an opening here. Could have attacked for two, put him at least on 18. I mean, you never know later in the game that uh, two damage might be uh, crucial. Especially against a player who plays with Sylvan. You know, you want to be quite aggressive there on the life. There's a balance. Ooh, so that's going to be tough. Only one card in hand. So I guess he looked up the balance here. And remember, it's a gentleman's tournament. So you cannot play with uh, Mind Twist. But of course, you can use your balance as a Mind Twist. So a very clever um, play here by Vilko. That's what I'm trying to say. And... We're seeing Remco having a tough time deciding what to discard. There goes that beautiful Wrath of God. I believe he keeps the Abyss in hand. I think that's a good decision. Abyss with your factory, that could actually win you the game. There's a draw. Animating attacking now. So now he does remember to attack. He probably just forgot the previous turn. Passing Novazar back that animation here. And this is turning into a pretty pretty interesting game where I think that both players have or are in a very good position. That one Abyss in hand is great. And of course, for Vilko, you know, you still have your Bazaar so you can uh, continue to dig. So discarding his uh, hand. Oh, all but one though. So three lands going to the bin. And Vilko not really finding what he wants there. And I guess if you're Remco, you could just attack again for two. Why not? Put him on 16. Playing the Swamp. Animating, attacking. Exactly. I wouldn't play out the Abyss yet. I mean, you don't want to show that to your opponent. You want to wait for your opponent to play out that big fat creature. Then you want to cast the Abyss. And even more cards going to the graveyard, but they're, they're not looking very impressive. So both players are kind of in a standstill, but that's good for Remco because Rem Remco is able to deal two points of damage every turn. Attacking for two, and I believe in his hand there. Is that a great defender in hand? Again, it's hard to see. Maybe it's wishful thinking from my part. I still hope that somehow Remco can have a play in this match where he uses his transmutation and great defender. Oh, look at this. Oh, Hello's Eve hitting the board. And there are some bigger creatures now in the bin for Vilko. Not that many, though. And that trike is a problem because the Abyss doesn't answer the trike very well. Well, actually, it doesn't at all. So that is a problem. I guess he can still attack. At least he's got a little bit of time to try to find an answer. Vilko dropping to 12 after that attack. He's probably going to use the Bazaar again. He still needs to remove a counter, by the way, exactly from the Oholo's Eve. So there's, I believe, only a trike in the graveyard. 
So it's, I mean, it's not too bad. It's just unfortunate for Remco that the Trike is an artifact creature that it's not, for example, a Sheevan or a Mahamoti, because then this Abyss would be the perfect answer. There's a Mace. Okay, that's that's an answer. He can now still attack for two, put him on 10. And that's, of course, a weakness of a reanimator strategy. It really wants to win with creature damage. Um, you know, that means that as long as you've got enough answers to it. Yeah, now they're discussing the um, the swords and the life gain. So they're correcting that. So now Vilko is on 17. Attacking here, putting him on 15. Passing the turn. And of course, end step, we see the bizarre activation, trying to find some more creatures. Okay, there's a Sheevan. Untapping, counter gets removed. But he's first going to use his... Oh, look at this, using his bizarre one last time, finding that extra Sheevan. And this is this is quite good here. Now it's a pretty good old uh, Hallow's Eve. We've got two Sheevans coming back and a Triskelion. But of course, we have that abyss burning in the hand of Remco, and that is going to give him some value. So the damage is very much limited because he also has that mace. And of course, he got his abomination back. And Vilko finding here a sorts, it's actually really good for him. He's probably going to play the abyss now. Got the swords in hand for later. I mean, this is really good. He could even consider attacking with Abomination, using his Great Defender. Ah, that wouldn't make any sense, though. No, okay, forget about that. I just want him to use the Great Defender, that's all. Anyway, Vilko's turn, drawing a card. He's got the Sheevan. Lost the Sheevan to the Abyss. And he's got the Trike. Attacking with both. Sending back the Sheevan, probably blocking the Trike on the Abomination. And that means he takes four damage, but remember, Abomination is a 2 6. So that's no problem for him. And then next turn, he can attack again with the factory and start dealing some damage to Vilko again. So it, it, it's not looking too bad for him. Ooh, but changing his mind, though, he is playing a Swords. I mean, I guess in a way that makes sense because then he can also attack with the Abomination next turn, deal four points of damage a turn. But he can, of course, cannot yet because he sent back the Sheevan. So he's got to wait another turn. I, there's All Hallows Eve coming back again. That is tricky. Gonna, oh, of course he's going to lose the Abomination to the Abyss. I forgot about that, of course. Abomination also eats away black creatures. It eats everything except for artifact creatures. There is a pass. Another activation there with the bazaar, losing the Sheevan. But the Sheevan is going to come back next turn, though. And now Vilko has a little opener. He can deal two points of damage. Is that a dancing scimitar in hand? That would be quite nice next to the abyss, but I'm not quite sure if it is. Tapping four mana. Yep, it is a dancing scimitar. One five flyer. I think I would have I would have kept different mana open, to be honest. I would have attacked with the factory, put him on 13, and then, you know. Use the uh, the rest of the mana to play your dancing scimitar. Anyway, water under the bridge. It's Vilko's turn here. He's used the bazaar one last time. Oh, he's going to. Trying to find some more big creatures. He does. And now everything is going to come back. So the Abomination is going to come back. But look at the amount of creatures coming back here from uh, Vilko's graveyard. That's insane. He's got two Mahamotis, two Shivans. And he has this uh, Triskelion hitting the board. We do see a Divine offering in the hand of Vilko, which is really good against the trike. I mean, he could actually play it now, and then, you know, if Vilko destroys it himself, then fine. 
Or is that a divine offering? Yeah, it's a divine offering. Gonna play the divine offering here. So probably Wilco's gonna deal two damage to Remco and then kill his own Triskelion. Exactly, it's what he does. So he's gonna drop here to 16, it seems. But I mean, this is pretty problematic, even though he's got the Maze and the Abyss. Because then he still takes 10 points of damage. He's gonna lose his own Abomination here to the Abyss. I mean, he's got 16, he can take it, but it's not great. Passing the turn here to Vilko. So Vilko still has to put a creature in the bin because of the Abyss. Exactly, is what Remco is now pointing out. I guess exactly go for a Mahamoti, right? Because you can pump your Sheevan. <laughs> he can send back one Sheevan, block the other on the, on the uh, exactly, on the other Sheevan. Take five, go to 11. Ooh, play great defender! Yes! I'm so happy to see this card in action. And it actually matters because it now makes the Dancing Scimitar a 1-9. And there, see the movements of Remco. He's enjoying himself. And you shoot, my man. You definitely shoot. Playing this card out, it should give you some price. You should get a reward. I mean, this is awesome. And it's functional. I mean, it's not just for fun. It's functional in this block. It's just fantastic. Reverse damage. That is actually pretty good. Next turn, don't use the maze. Soak up all the damage. Play reverse damage. Or is reverse damage just from one source? I believe it's from one source. So... Exactly. Use a maze on one Sheevan. Because he's going to lose the Mammoth here to the Abyss. He's going to use the maze on one. And now he can use a reverse damage. He's not going to block. Pump it for seven. Are we going to see the reverse damage? Yeah, love it! Reverse damage! What a master! I mean, he's played out Magic the Gathering, if you ask me. He's played out the game, ladies and gentlemen. Remco has played out Magic the Gathering here. This is fantastic. First great defender, then a reverse damage. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And I mean... Slowly but surely, Remco is getting himself back into a position where he can start dealing damage to Vilko. I mean, he's going to go super slow, but I mean, he'll be able to. He's now on 18 himself, which is pretty good. There we see a Sylvan. Does need to take a damage from the City of Brass then. Passing the turn though. I believe he forgot to take the damage. There's a pass. Lose to Sheevan. Three cards now for Vilko to look at. I'm just hoping that Remco can have that little bit of luck here, you know, that he's not finding a big fatty. Oh, this is unfortunate to try. It's not the end of the world, but it's kind of annoying because the Abyss, of course, doesn't solve the trike problem. I'm really rooting here for Remco because I want to see a game three and because I'm still hoping for, you know, the transform transmutation deck to have some results. There's the attack here for one. That makes absolute sense because he's got that maze putting him on 14. Drawing two. And there's the Sylvan trigger, of course. I mean, as long as he can keep that Abyss alive, it's looking quite good, actually, for Remco. There's an All Hallows Eve. Okay, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's a problem, because there's so many creatures in there. Even with the Abyss. I believe there are like three Sheevans, two Mamotis, some trikes. I don't even know. Anyway, there's a pass. Remco just finding a lot of lands here. I believe he's got two swamps in hand, playing one out now. 
The other card I cannot identify. Oh, this a planes only lands in hand here. That is so unfortunate. I would still attack for one. Why not put him on 13? You've got your maze. Got nothing to lose. Turn it sideways. Go for it. Exactly. I mean, there's no reason not to attack. Putting uh, Vilko on 13, passing to turn. There's a trigger, of course, from Sylvan. Two cards back. He's probably just going to wait. I mean, <laughs> you can use the bizarre and end step off Nemco. Okay, he's got another big fatty. There's a Mahamoti. Passing the turn. So he's going to lose that Mahamoti, of course, to the Abyss. But of course, uh, it's also a blocker now for the Dancing Scimitar. There's an Abomination. Probably doesn't want to play it out yet. Or am I missing something? Because the Abomination is going to be eaten. He is playing it out, though. Perhaps as a blocker the next turn for the trike. <laughs> Passing turn, and we're going to see that end step activation of the Bazaar. Why not draw two, discard three, or in this case, discard two, because you don't have more just lands here. Untap, upkeep, and he could use the Bazaar again. Of course, he could also use, deal some points of damage, put the Triskelion in the bin. <laughs> then we see the trigger. Then he's going to use the Bazaar. All that before the Scream counter goes off. And then the Scream counter goes off and all the creatures return to the battlefield. This is going to be insane here for Vilko. He's got so many creatures in the graveyard. Oh, look at that. And even with the Abyss, it's simply too slow. Also the two trikes, of course. Oh my god. This is so problematic for them. He's, I mean, he's getting some uh, some abominations back. You know, one. Actually, actually, once he's got two on the table. Good, good for you, but it is so not going to save him. And now he's going to go to his draw step. He's got the Sylvan triggers. Oh man, look at that. Three Mahamoti Jin, two Sheevan Dragons, and two Triskelions. The only good news here for Demko is that they have Summoning Sickness. But that's the only, only thing. He needs like a Wrath of God. Gonna lose an Abomination to his own Abyss. Gonna draw for turn. Okay, there's a Willow. He plays with a one-off Willow. I don't know why, but at least for now it's good. It can block one of the flyers. It's got regeneration. I mean, it is going to eventually die to the Abyss, but it's going to be a good blocker for a couple of turns. Passing the turn here. Looks like we're going to see a Bazaar. No, we're going to see a Shatter on the Dancing Scimitar. That's unfortunate because that would have been a great chum blocker. Demko being on 16. and I think he's going to go on the pain train here. So he's going to lose a creature to the Abyss, lose a Mahamoti. Attack here with two Sheevans. Just attack with everything. Why not turn him sideways? Ay, 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 ay. Animating for another chump, sending back a Sheevan, I assume. So upon animation, he wants to kill the factory. Now the factory can still pump itself though, so it can make it a 3-3, forcing Vilko exactly to use another counter. That's what he does. So now it's gonna die. But that's an okay exchange, I think. Going to send back the Shiva and take the damage from the 1-1. One -one. Block the other one with the Willow. Block the trike with the abomination. Take ten, so he's gonna go to five. There's one dice there out outside of her 
screen, unfortunately. And then he's going to kill the Abomination. That does mean that the Triskelion also dies, though. So I actually don't think this is a very good play. Remember, damage stays on the creature that go counts for the Abomination, but also goes for the Triskelion. Triskelion is a 4-4. It's got two points of damage on it. I think if I would have been Vilka, I don't think it matters much, but I would have kept your trike alive. I would have kept the Abomination alive. Because you have your Sheevan to block next turn, you're on a healthy life total, and the Triskelion is, is still a very good creature with the counters on it, with that Abyss. Also, you know, Demko being on 5, it's 3 points of direct damage you can use later on in the game. But it does, like I said, I don't think it matters. There's another Mahamoti. And uh, now the Willow is going to die to the Abyss. And I think it's uh, it's the end of the road here. Oh, is that a balance? Is that a balance here in hand for Remco? That is too funny. Play the balance. Play the balance. Hey! Oh, I love I love I love this game number two, man. This is so. I was I was a little bit down. It's not. I've got nothing against Vilco. Don't get me wrong, but I just I want to see a game three. These decks are so entertaining, and I was like, he's dead and buried, and then he top decks this. <laughs> Balance and he's back into it. This is fantastic. This is so cool. Both players now top decking mode. Well, actually not. I mean, Vilko is it has a big advantage with the Sylvan and the Bazaar. Oh, finding out that uh, finding that Triskelion. But I mean, Remco's got the maze, and I think he top decked a great defender. So that <laughs> is not the best for him. What an entertaining game too. And Emko again, looking at his cards. I mean that Sylvan is doing a lot of work for him in this game. Looks like he's gonna... Ooh, drawing his... Counting his cards though, like, does he have a Brain Geyser perhaps? It's a good thing he's counting his cards because it there, there's not a lot of cards left in his library. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards, I believe. Oh, he's going to draw four. Oh, so he's got three cards on left, right? Three cards left. That is so funny. He can look at his entire library next turn with the Sylvan. If I count it correctly. Oh, this is so funny. I mean, what he needs is an animate dead on a Triskelion, and then he can win. There's a Jade statue on the side of Ramco. Pretty good creature. Works together great with the Abyss. <coughs> Untapping here. Looking at his entire library with the Sylvan. I mean, if we can just find an animate, I'm sure there's still an animate in the deck, right? Oh, there's another one in hand already. Okay, so that's enough. Now he can kill Remco here, dealing six points of damage. Remember, he's only on five. Actually, he was on four then, I guess. There's the great defender in hand of Remco, but it's not going to help him. He dies here in game number two, but um, Vilko and Remco, thank you so much for this very, very, very entertaining game. It was a great laugh. I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's just beautiful to see these decks in action. And like I said, Remco, I think you played out Magic the Gathering, so you should be rewarded. You know, I'm, I'm going to think of something. I, I want to send you something. I think it deserves a price. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this game. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, if you like what you see, please take a moment to like, share, and comment. All this is free and really helps the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, hit that button and ring that bell. Okay, thank you. Now, if you enjoy the matches from this tournament, next week we have another match coming up. And um, yeah, so don't forget to check out TV Talks next week again. And before you go, there's one last thing. I also have my own Patreon page where you can support the channel financially as well. Check out patreon.com slash Talks for all the info. And for now, let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the
to somber physique. 